We'll now take a look at the clip sources themselves. Here I'm just dragging from the sources folder. I could also look at the sources and clips. We have the animation inside here as well. If I were to right click on here and go source, there we go, is it shows me all the items related to the source data but it also has the ability to uh, show me the storage. Currently it's internal, that means that all of the animation data is loaded into the scene and if I save the scene it is uh, saved with the scene and therefore it can be quite heavy. What we can do is identify and let's do uh, a, a file name and offload it. So the external types are exercise binary, exercise text, this is the uh, probably the heaviest file but it is a text file. The cheapest smallest file is the external native binary. Now I can go into here and do which is I'll just call this hopper but it's still currently loaded into my scene. What I can also do at any stage is just offload it into the source. So you notice all the items have disappeared. If I were to just close that for a second, open up a browser, look in my actions, there I have hopper. And so it's now external to my scene. And if I save the scene, I do not have to save the animation. I w it'll just save the reference to it. So at any stage, put this over here. I can, I'll keep this over because I can drag and drop. I can load it back in, and there we go. It's back off and it's running like so. This means that you can use hundreds of megs or gigs worth of data without having to load it inside the scene. In addition, if we were to look at the animation editor, oh, by the way, the uh, the dot eni file here, I can also just drag and drop externally as well. And if I do drag and drop it, and I look at the source data again, it is now gone to internal because I've reinstantiated the source. You see I've got hopper and hopper one. If I select this one, it is internal and it is loaded. So if I go back here now, external, I can then select the same one if I wish. So that's that's the one. Yep, I want to replace it. The file name has changed. Do you want to reload the action into the new file name? Yes I do. So therefore I've just updated it with the original one. So this is to be careful of because you can override somebody else's file. It's going to get rid of this and look at this. Inside the animation editor I'm going to view all the parameters. So there are all my keyframes. I can also partially offload. You notice the F curve here has a single key every frame. This is standard for motion capture. What I'm going to do is partial F curves offload. Say I want to do wherever we are at 32. I want everything before this to be offloaded. So I will go from say uh, 1, which I'll do 0 to sorry, comma uh, 32 colon. And now I can go partially loaded and therefore it's stripped all that data from inside here. If I go back to loaded now all of the data here is going to ignore this I could have just to refresh this, this is locked, if I refresh it there we go it's all back on again. So you can do multiple sections. Now if, I, if this wasn't motion capture and I were to do say a section inside here so let's say from uh, 32 to 60 and then from 80 to 100 partially loaded. It's still going to interpolate between these frames. It's just offloading uh, the sections I've asked for. So it's very useful for trimming the beginning and the end but remember it will interpolate if we to do a section like this. We can also import a referenced action. 
and that's going to import it from an, an external file. So if I do here now, when I look at the climb, there we go, uh, let's delete this, is that it's already a, an external file, but it is loaded into my scene. But when I save the scene, it's going, not going to save it. It's because it's already looking and referencing it externally. In addition, I can save this as a preset. If I go into my source data here, I'm going to just put it fully loaded. There we go. Something like that. I'm just going to keep it internal. So now, I'm very happy with the animation. Yes, it's perfect. It's great. It's exactly what I want. If I save it, what I'm going to do is just iconize this at the moment. I can save it with a render region. So there's my little character, and I can do save. And I'm going to go to my local actions. Notice I have used render region as a thumbnail, and I'm going to call this hop, like so. Inside my browser, we now have a little icon for this, and I can drag and drop it directly inside my animation mixer. I can also drag and drop these presets onto a toolbar and make a toolbar for other people.